This is a technique the freaking developers use. It cannot be that, well, I suppose it can be that complicated, but they've clearly set it up to be relatively simple. Mark Arth, White Run. Is he wearing a different? He's wearing a different tunic. Yeah, he is wearing the, the right tunic. That's what it was. I presume it also had the other aspects. That we, we did change the one before. But there it is. We found the solution. As we can see here. Let me sex change him. Yep, it is the same tunic and everything. So that's what it was. We have found the solution, folks. To do this more complex process. Well, not more complex. It's actually a more refined process. Because it involves not having so many extra NIF files. can see here we needed to have the proper we needed to have a file that had proper texture setups like the dawn guard one dawn star one and we need to set its 3d index to zero so if i change the 3d index on all of these yes i'm absolutely sure to zero we should see our guards in their new armors Irregardless of their gender. That's done there. While I'm in here, my, I'm going to take a quick look at the actor table and see if I can find guards. Armor, armor add on, activators, actions, actor value information. No. Non-player character, actor. I'll see where the guard actors are. So we have got gone guard. We've got Dawnstar guard here.
can we actually just do it by name and try and find the actual Dawnstar gods? All right, so these are all things that have a guard reference. So if I wanted to make variety in the guards, I'd have to tinker with these. Rifting guards. I'd really have to take a close look at how the guard logic is set up to add some variety to their faces and respawn rates. What do we got here? What can we find out about the guards looking at this information? Yeah, so it's basically you change that. Male Nord, yeah, see here. I basically have to make duplicates of this. I'm going to have to figure out where it's actually referenced and where it calls it. So adding new guard isn't... Uh, isn't the most easy of things. But it's interesting, nonetheless, to look at. Now, if we've done everything properly, when we pop into the game, we should see all of our guards that we have spawned around us are wearing their proper new gear. And it's only using one NIF file for all of that, as opposed to, you know, nine. Or, well, nine plus all the supplemental subsections of it. But there we go, yes! We've got guards aplenty. Markarth, Whiterun, Falkreath, Falkreath Guy, Riften. Pale Hold Guard, Winter Hold Guard, Solitude Guard. And they're all wearing their different boots as per the mod creation. They've got their helmets. Let me guess. Someone stole your sweet no, no, they did not. But there you go, folks. Thinking of settling in? There's a house for sale. Breeze home. You should talk to the steward and help him keep He is a mouthy one, isn't he? So, with that all done, we can now take a look at what files I can now delete. So we're using the Dawn Star Guard as our base armor, which means that my full uh, now ultimately when I do the same thing for the boots, I'll be able to remove all the boots from here as well, because it actually already is a base. <laughs> all right, so I can take out the Fulcreath Guard armor, these three. I can do the same thing with the helmets once I. Uh, patch the helmet to, to work the same process. I'll leave the guard armor because I'm not sure if I were to tinker with the mod whether I, I could um, actually just use that instead of the Dawn Star. So we'll leave that in there for now. Uh, let's see. The Jal March guard armor, we can remove those.
Mark Arth. Where is the Mark Arth guard armor? Mark Arth guard armor. Can remove those. Riften guard armor. We can remove those. Solitude guard armor. We can remove those. White run guard armor. We can remove those. Winter hold guard armor. We can remove those. One point two megabytes were just trimmed off of the file size. Wait, is that one point two? Is it more? Let me pop this out and move it over to here. Eight point four one megabytes. And I'll be able to get it much, much smaller. When I'm done, we should only need to have... That. Those should be the only files I need. Because the boots are coming from the fur boots. The gloves are coming from the Dawn Guard gloves. Meaning that they are already have existing uh, meshes. So when I'm done, this folder will be reduced to a size of... 1.45 megabytes from well, 1.45 megabytes where is it be these six uh, five files and the first person so it'll be 1.67 megabytes from the original size for just the male armors of 14.8 megabytes. So that's a major reduction. Imagine something similar, It'll probably be about two, maybe two and a half megabytes when it's all done because we also need to deal with these and I'm only gonna need for these first person Yep, F, F, and, and yep. 1.43 megabytes. So yeah, you were looking at, what, 3 megabytes total for the mod from the original size, which was currently sitting at 30. So saving 27 megabytes, folks. That's a huge, huge savings that you can get by using this technique. And that also means that you can make the mod much, much bigger because, you know, you only need to reference one re base model as opposed to having to reference tons of them. And that's for the meshes, that, but that's for the meshes. You know, I haven't even considered the size of the textures because the texture sizes are not even going to change. My texture sizes are going to remain 123 megabytes. But instead of it being 150 megabytes, roughly, it's 125 megabytes size. And that's a pretty good savings on size. It's good and efficient, and that's always good when you're programming. All right, so we're going to end the stream here. I'm going to upload it to my YouTube, and then I'm going to go jump back on Sarkana.